Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Let me just quickly put my phone properly. Thank you for joining everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, I think that's enough people here to join. Hello, hello, hello everyone. And welcome to the Fix Talks Gender Based Violence. My name is Babi Mbezi. And I'm the founder of an anti-gender based violence organization called I Hear You. Now, today we're going to be having a conversation on gender based violence. This is in efforts to do what's right, which is the initiative that the fix is currently undergoing. And we're going to be talking specifically about um, gender based violence in, in intimate relationships, um, the misconceptions of gender based violence and consent in this conversation we're going to be having Gugule Tunya Tumba Jujule Twa as well as Sina Konompunga who is also who is a representative of I Hear You. So um please do take note of the trigger warning that is in the pinned comment and if you are able to continue with the conversation welcome and if you are somebody that's going to be triggered by what we're going to be talking about. Take it easy. Um, so I've just received a message from Gugu saying that she's having trouble um, requesting. So I think I'll um, add you onto the live. And yes, this live will be saved. Let me just try and add Gugu so far. So Gugu, I've sent you a request. Hopefully that will work out. And while she's joining in, um, please be aware that we're not going to be taking... Hi, Gugu. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? You look stunning as per oh, usual. Nice. You look cute. I see the hairstyle. Thank you. So yeah, I was sure. just telling the audience that throughout the conversation, um, we won't necessarily be checking the questions, but we will have a question and answer session at the I end of the conversation. So do pop in your questions, not in the comment section, but in the question section that is provided. So yeah, Google, please introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Gugu Letnian Zumba, I am a South African YouTuber. Um, yeah, that's me. Content creator, Content mental health creator. activist. Yeah. Activist, yeah, gender-based violence girl. Don't like dim your light. I just try to <laughs> speak about the things that are important to me. So. Mm. Mm. And it's very appreciated because you know, like you're an influencer and it's you have a voice. So it works out, you know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, let's add Snuck onto the live. Sure. Uh, hopefully there isn't trouble from his side. Oh, um, Snuckle, I don't know if um, you got the request. And there we go. Hi, Snuckle. How are you? Hi. I'm um, very well, thanks. And you? I, I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, can you please introduce yourself? Okay. So I'm Sina Konumpunga, um, a director at an anti-gender-based violence um, organization based on the facilitation of the prevention of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And just be before we get into, into the conversation, you guys, um, Hi, what is gender-based... Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, you guys can greet each other. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, so just before we get into the conversation briefly, what does gender-based violence and the movement mean to you as an individual? What is, what is, what is the stance, like what, where do you stand with gender-based violence as an individual? Um, Snaku, can we go with you first? Okay, so where do I stand? So do you want me yeah. to define gender-based violence or? Like what does the movement mean to you? So the movement to me is basically a war 
against women and children, basically, um, perpetuated mainly by men. Not saying that only men are the perpetuator, uh, perpetuators of gender-based violence, but we all know that the stats show that men mainly are the ones who are perpetuating violence against women and mm. children, you know, and yeah. people are dying, lives matter, you know, so this is mm. a movement to save lives, basically. That's what it is. Yeah. I agree. And Gugu? It's putting an end to like wrongful doings. Um, I mm. think that putting anyone at harm's way is wrong. Using your power against someone is wrong. On someone is wrong. Mm. So for me, it's about giving people their voices back and that respect back mm. you know um it sucks that we have to speak on behalf of people or kind of have these kind of conversations because a simple no should be no and that's where it ends yeah yeah i just uh, okay you can go no 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 speak okay yeah i just think that um the movement like snako said is about trying to save people lives because people are yeah. dying i i don't want to say women and children are dying because then society has already deemed women as less than and children as less than so once we recognize that it's people actual human beings that are losing yeah. their lives every single day then i think we can all be on the same page about things because mm. why are people dying unnecessarily you know yeah so with that being said let's get into the conversation and talk about the most common form of gender-based violence, and that's gender-based violence in intimate relationships. This is gender-based violence, parati inside komjolo. This is gender-based violence with your person. This is gender-based violence in a safe space, gender-based violence in the home. So um, I don't know who wants to go first, but um, what what is gender-based violence in the intimate relationship? What does that look like? I think it's abuse of any form, be it physical, emotional. Um, mm. Yeah, I think that if you are using your power against someone to get something or to hurt them or to manipulate them or to take advantage, that is a form of gender-based violence. Mm. I do think that when it does happen in the space of an intimate relationship, we are sometimes not aware that it is happening because we're in denial for many different Yo. reasons. And secondly, mm -hmm. I feel like the people closest to us have the best opportunity to hurt us um, because we are in this space. And a lot can happen when you are with someone in an enclosed environment. Mm -hmm. um, so I, when I think about gender-based violence, more often than not, I do think about it in relation to intimate relationships, especially with mm -hmm. women in South Africa, because most are no, no, not most, but most cases of gender-based violence that may happen against women are in relationships and by loved mm. ones and ex-husbands and boyfriends because that yeah. is where we are most vulnerable um yeah and snuckle what's your opinion on that what what does gender-based violence in an intimate relationship look like yeah so i definitely agree with what google said you know um especially what resonated with me is that people often think that it's just based on your current partner or your husband your boyfriend at the time but mm. it's you know, things like mm. stalking, that's a form of gender-based violence, which mm -hmm. I think a lot of attention, you know? So mm. I, I resonate with what she said there. Um, and I just think um, in terms of men in the movement, you know, um, I, I think that there are men who do suffer as well, who are victims, do you mm. understand? And they may not necessarily have a voice in terms of reporting what's happening to them or even having the liberty to speak about them in social spaces because of certain connotations or how they'll be treated by other people. Mm. You know, they live in fear. Um, mm. And a lot of the time it's more on the emotional side. It's not necessarily physical, you know? Mm. And yeah, I just think that men need to sort of find a voice as well, all those who are victims. And, mm. you know, know that it's okay to speak up for yourself. It doesn't mean that you're less of a man. You know, mm. you, you, you still mm. have a voice, you, you, your, your, your trauma still matters. Yeah. Yeah. So just as a disclaimer for anybody who jumps the gun, because we live in a very hypersensitive um, generation, this conversation is based on the men's perspective and the woman's perspective. 
and obviously Gugu and I are representing women, not solely um, limiting our opinions as to just that of a woman's. And Snarko will be um, speaking from the point of view of a man. And if you haven't um, realized, gender-based violence is not gender neutral, you know. Um, the yes. reason why there's so much anger towards men is because men are the perpetrators, you know. I like saying in these sort of, in these sorts of conversations that... Um, Every, like every struggle in this life is intersectional, you know, the same way um, poverty has a face and that face is black is the same way gender based violence has a face and that face is that of a man. The man is the perpetrator in conversations like this. The man is the face of what a perpetrator looks like. And I just want to like, you know, touch on the common norms of gender-based violence in intimate relationships. Wait, see, bo, bo, our, our moms, our aunties, bo, begezela, bo, mosadi tswarati baka mo khaling, bo, bo, um, he knows where home is, bo, bo, you know, you know that the, the, the narrative of women as, um, accepting struggle in a relationship, accepting abuse in a relationship because that's what's normalized in our, in our girl talks, in our, yeah. you know, begezela. So what do you guys have to say about that? Because I, for one, I'm too, like, I, like I'm too, I know too much for me to begezela. I personally would not begezela. If he does it once, he's going to do it again. And yeah, what, before I get carried away on that, what do you guys think about that whole narrative, that begezela narrative? Um. Anyway. I don't believe in beggarzillering at all. At all. Not in the slightest. I think that when you beggarzilla, you're just putting off the inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're treated a certain way in a relationship and someone doesn't change, the more you put up with it, the more you're subjecting yourself to it. Dude. You're teaching your abuser that it is somewhat acceptable and that you can forgive it and move past mm -hmm. it. So I think mm -hmm. in a relationship, it is super important to have boundaries, have certain things whereby if that happens, like I'm out and there's no two ways about it. Um, mm. I think the boundaries are personal to different people. People handle yeah. things differently. People are more accommodating to different things. People can forgive certain things. Um, but personally, I'm not the babes of the beggars all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, no, count me out. Give me zero. No, Give yeah, me no. zero. 100%. So cool. what I, do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, Google, continue, sorry. No, 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 no. no. I'll hear his thoughts, sorry, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I agree that the whole Megazella thing is, um, it's, it's not on, you know, it's nonsense, if I may say. Um, and also the message that it sends to a man, right? So you telling your friend, your sister, you know, whoever it may be, who's in this toxic situation that they must make a Zella, and Yama Zella, you know, it will get better. Mm -hmm. What's that say? What, what that's saying to the person on the other end is that, yeah, it's okay. It's sharp. I can do whatever I want. You know, this person mm. will be there, which, which is, you know, just feeding off of the whole thing. Not saying that it's that person's fault for sticking around, but it does mm. if you're advising about and do so. I think that moving forward, us, you know, sure, our parents might tell us that, but moving forward, let's not educate or, or teach our, our younger sisters. Let's mm. not teach our, yes. our cousins, you know, that sort of behavior that is okay you know we need to draw a line to try and end this whole beggarzilla thing you know it may mm. be colorful sometimes but culture was even made by people for people so if it no longer serves people then what is the purpose of what we are doing you know mm. so yeah so those are my thoughts also i feel like the beggarzilla conversation is normally if not always directed towards women why is it that we need to be understanding and we need to be forgiving and work through certain certain things i think that you know what i will applaud men for being carefree like kings in that if a Dude. man doesn't want to stand for something he will not stand he will for leave. It, and it does not happen and if it Stop does love. happen he will be encouraged by everyone around him to leave. To leave. So, dude. Yeah. It, it, it really is interesting to kings, me that dude. Uh, soft care kings, mm. carefree kings. Mm. So, it's interesting to me that when it comes to bigger zinnering, it, it often is directed in one direction. You know? Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. sorry, but like, I'm sorry. Bigger zinnering comes with repeated behavior, right? Yes. And, and what I want to say 
may seem like an unpopular opinion, but it's facts. I, I, I'm sorry, it's, it's facts. If somebody apologizes for something and they don't change their behavior with whatever hurts you, that's emotional abuse. You are emotionally manipulating me into staying in a situation I would rather not stay in if things were otherwise. So if you're going to tell me that, no, I'm sorry, this won't happen again, and I love you, I'm going to believe you, and if it happens again, you've emotionally manipulated me into being with you. That's abusive. You're in a, you, that's, that's what intimate um, gender-based violence looks like. That it, you can't yeah. do that. Cheating, just to put it in layman, is it's abusive. Emotional. People want to be like, nah, cheating isn't bad. Cheating is not abuse. Cheating is, a, 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 I don't want to say a huge part of gender-based violence, but it forms part of gender-based violence. I, I want to make this scenario, right? If, 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 I, if we're in the bedroom and we're doing the magic and I tell you that, okay, babe, look, this position hurts me. I don't want to do it. And your partner listens. Okay, cool. You don't want to do this position because it hurts you. And then the next time you guys um, are intimate and the next time he doesn't do it. And the next time he doesn't do it. And then once it's almost forgotten, he does it again. It's like we've spoken about that, the fact that this is hurting me. So why are you doing it again if I've already laid that on the table? It's, it's the same with emotional and psychological abuse as well if you are hurting me in any way and i've spoken on it already and you do it yeah. repeatedly it's abusive behavior point blank simple. i think it also it boils down to whether or not a person cares about you because someone who cares about you who's hurting you will not want to do the same and do you know you what i mean something up, make an effort to commit it to memory mm. because it is something that they've done in the past and it has affected you greatly yeah. yeah yeah like i don't think it's fair that a lot of forms of abuse are looked down upon because they're not gruesome just because your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever is not screaming for their lives it doesn't mean it's not abusive just because the rape that happened sorry we did mention trigger warnings just because the rape that's happening in your own home in your own apartment is not you running for your life or you screaming but it's a silent one and it's one that's common that you don't even say anything about it anymore. Doesn't mean it's not abusive. You need to stop. Mm -hmm. Like point blank, simple, like Gugu said, if you care about somebody, you really will care about how things affect them. If someone is not comfortable with what you're doing, what are you doing? If you love them, why? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I'd also want to mention that why do people make gender-based violence a family issue? A family issue? Yeah. Oh, the, when they call good. the family for a yeah, meeting because family. someone raised the hand instead of going to the police. It's because they instead want of going to, protect, to the police. Yeah, they want to protect the perpetrator. So instead of going to the police, uh. they know that as a family, they can do something that seems like they're doing something. And the key word is seen because they know that nothing is going to change from that conversation at all. So I honestly mm. think that like, it sucks to say, but I do think to some extent families really do nurture and protect abusers. Mm. Oh, um, they do. It's someone who is in the family and may have somewhat of a position or a leadership role, and whatever it may be. But mm. I do think that it being a family issue is not enough. Like, I I'm so sorry. It, it will never mm. be enough. Family meeting. Yeah. It someone, someone is being abused. Mm. I, th I think it definitely also has a lot to do with pride, you know, and protecting the family image. The family the fa also, the family, I think, you family, know? sorry, Sinako, to cut you off, family name or surname mm. is a very big thing in black culture. Like, our family has Dude. to be perceived a certain way. We cannot have an abuser. Like, that is more important to people mm. than the actual abuse or someone who is being hurt in the family. Mm. Yeah. Like, sorry, I, Sinako, I, I, I off. And you, you, you sort of, the family would sort of do anything to protect their name, you know, your, yes. your life, your experiences within your marriage, within your relationship or your experience of that person doesn't matter. Their name comes first, you know, their reputation, how people perceive them is sort of seen as more important than whatever you're going through, which is very yeah. wrong. It, it, it doesn't make sense. People put, people put um, reputation over somebody's mental well-being like you yeah. see it even on social media people are like oh this person is ruining this person's career this person is ruining this person's name this person what about that the victim's mental health 
do you understand that this, this person is now struggling for, for, from post traumatic stress disorder there's there's a lot of mental health issues that come with gender based violence what about that 100%. Someone actually tweeted something last week and said there's nothing scarier than a man with power because anything spoken mm. against him will not be heard. Yo. Dude. Dude. So as, yeah, I honestly feel like as soon as you have some sort of reputation, as soon as you have power, as soon as you have connections, people are more concerned about um keeping those relationships and nourishing them instead of mm. calling out you know Dude. problematic behavior. and women are ignored at the bottom at grassroots levels of society what more when it's someone in power someone in power oh definitely dude yeah definitely silence kana opera are ring were you silent or you silent or you silenced dude yeah <laughs> okay so i i also just want to mention that like you know um we recently did a post on uh violence against men and like snako did mention gender based violence is gender neutral but it is skewed towards women being um victims so um like what is what is gender based i want i want us to go deeper into what gender based looks like with the man as a victim with the boy child as a victim but let's just rather stick to intimate relationships so could you like have what 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 do men face with women i can tell you that okay he's financially abusing me um he yes. is keeping me from all my friends you're not going out looking like that you're not what is what is practically what is gender based violence from the man's perspective in an everyday relationship look like what what do you experience okay so firstly i'd i'd, I'd say manipulation right and mm. that would sort of come in different forms i feel like so there there you do get instances where men are abused physically right um for example mm. if there's wrong behavior it's seen as acceptable or socially acceptable for you to be slapped by a woman for example you know mm. and that wouldn't be necessarily something you take as gender based violence or a crime you know it's just something that you take it's just like oh, okay i just got slapped i was wrong it's okay we move on from that right but if and it shouldn't to, be like that mm. it it shouldn't it really shouldn't mm. be like, that's that's not okay like physical mm. violence like hitting someone is is never okay you know mm. um then if we move to a relationship for example you know then things like um for example there's a misconception that a man always would like to have sex Yeah. Mm. It's not the case. It's not always mm. the case. And someone would guilt trip you into having sex or they would yes. sort of um get on top of mm. you, you know, just sort of try to force things, try to coerce mm. you. And if you don't give in to that, you know, okay, I'm going to deal with an unhappy person or this mm. person yeah. is going to talk to me, I'm going to get the silent treatment, you know. Mm. And these are norms. These are things that happen all the time. Um but they're seen as okay. um so mm-hmm. yeah from the man's perspective it's 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 very it's sort of more subtle forms of gender based violence if i may put it that way you know mm-hmm. things that we don't necessarily see as problems but are very problematic and they actually have an effect on you psychologically mentally you know you are sort of conditioned to accept certain things even though you may not like them mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i like the fact that you mentioned um forced sexual activity because that's the next part of this conversation um consent or oh, do you do you want to do you want to say something good no no i was i was going to do exactly what you're about to do because i was going to take what he just said and kind of yeah. yeah yeah so 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 consent consent one of the root causes of consent co- consent what is consent you guys What is consent? Because clearly people don't know. So, so what's consent? Yeah, Google, you want to go if first? If you, I, I, I don't mind. If you are to engage with someone sexually, you are to ask if they are comfortable with all that you are doing, doing, beginning to end. If at any point someone says no, if their body says no, I also don't like this thing of. people ignoring body languages all of a sudden in that moment if someone is fighting you off if someone is not opening up they are shying mm. away from you they are repelling it is a no um consent obviously comes in physically saying the word no mm-hmm. now 
with consent, no is no and no is a sentence. No does not need justification. If I don't feel like having sex with you because it is a no, it is a no. And that must mm -hmm. be respected as that. If I say no, I do not want to be convinced. Mm -hmm. I do not want to don't try sway my opinion. Like mm -hmm. Sinapo spoke about a situation here where, um, in, I mean, from his experience as a man, if you are to say no to sex to a woman, they can jump on you. You cannot do that. You That's can, wrong. You, you, can't, you can't try coerce someone into having sex with you. So I think my biggest thing with consent is that people need to understand that no is a full sentence and no needs to be respected. Mm. Yeah. Sinako? Yeah, definitely. So what I'd like to sort of focus on is that it has to be a mutual agreement. You know, mm. I feel like a lot of the times some people might be under the impression that women are the only ones who can give consent or withdraw consent, you know? Yeah. Mm. It's a mm. mutual, you know, we both have to be on the same page. We both agreeing. An agreement means that both from both sides, we both want to do this you know yes um, and consent is not only like a one time thing for example um Breath, where you're in a relationship you. and you say yes once no consent is an ongoing thing you know mm -hmm. and it's, it it encompasses also forming an understanding with your partner or not mm. you know? consent is not only verbal you know just like communication mm -hmm. is not only verbal you know mm -hmm. you get, i don't know what you call it but body language also can form consent like if someone pushes you away that's a clear thing that hey i'm not comfortable mm -hmm. with the stop mm -hmm. you know you know mm. so check in with your partner ask them how are you feeling are you okay with this like every time you're taking it to the next level whether it's from hugging to kissing you know ask are you okay with this we need to sort of normalize and people like to say that oh no it's taking the romance out of that but who says that we set norms as people you know, who said it's you know who so, said it? exactly who said it? You, you you sex is so, romantic guys you know, south africa I, I is the like, rape capital of the wow. world if, if people know, are saying consent is not romantic i can't you know, it's, it's it's just it's just yeah so it's an ongoing thing where boundaries are set you know what this person is comfortable with you don't know so even if you think you know ask you know because being verbal is sort of the, the clearest way because consent mm. has to be clear, you know, mm. at the end of the day, you know, and something very important is that consent can be withdrawn at any time by whichever mm. party. If mm. someone is not comfortable with anything and they indicate to you, whether it's by mm -mm, just them, mm -mm, stop, mm. you know, Dude. don't, there's no, uh, no, ah, she's playing hard to get, I could see she really wanted it or no, mm. no, it work like that you know that I just, first I just, no is enough Mm, I just want to I just want to touch on that like like you need to accept that first no you know like Google and I've spoken about this before is that for me to even say no I've already been saying no with my body so for me to even I'm verbalize me, that I'm saying me, no right now I mean no get off of me consent is enthusiastic Google these are your mm -hmm. words bro Activist Google. The consent is enthusiastic. If that's you can see that I'm not also, vibing, we're not vibing. There are no blur lines. There's no gray area. There's no. Uh, uh, can we? I assumed that you know that. Like it's 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 black and white. Consent is black and white. And like Sunako said, just because I said I do on our wedding day doesn't mean three years and um, four days, three years and four days into our uh, marriage one night, I don't feel like having sex, but I said I do on our wedding day. You have entitlement to my sex, to my body. Excuse me. That's not how it works. Con consent is con um, 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 continuous. It is enthusiastic and there are no blur lines. That's it. You want to say something, Gugu? Yeah, what, what Pabi said, sorry, in terms of, it's so true. Before someone says no, they've said no in so many different ways, Do it. through their body language or in other ways. So for mm. someone to find, I also need people to understand that sometimes people will say things like, um, sometimes people can't outright say no because they're traumatized. So if yes. you are in a position where someone is, doing whatever it is that they may be doing to your body things such as shutting down becoming mute 
and not being able to say the word no is exactly. a very big possibility. So that's why people need to understand that no is said before no, the word even comes out. Come like Sinako said, learn your partner. Have these conversations. And even if someone isn't your partner, it's interesting to me that when having conversations outside of an intimate space, when things like mm -mm are said, everyone understands what that mm. means. But now because it's mm. said in a different environment, you now want to interpret it in a manner in which is going to help you. Mm -mm doesn't mm. mean I'm playing hard to get. Mm -mm means mm. no. Exactly. So this, this, this narrative of also wanting to play dumb and like, oh, but I didn't know. Oh, but you didn't say no. If you are having sex... Please. These are the responsibilities that come with having sex, and these are the things that you need to make yourself aware of from the beginning. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And and, and I, okay, Snaku, you can go. Yeah, I, I just also want to say that consent cannot be given by someone who's underage. Firstly, you know that's Please. very very important. Someone who's come on now, who's, who's who's under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Please. You know, someone who's come unconscious, on someone who's sleeping. No, no, come on, like those. Like use your brain. You you know we know this guys, you know, and I, I just hate that people play dumb all of a sudden. No. Oh, yeah. no people idea. play dumb. No. I was no. Can, no. Can I just say that I know I know someone, obviously I won't mention their name. Um people were chilling, you know, bright vibes, like that scene, you know? And um so like the boys are watching this one guy pour his girlfriend a drink right and mm -hmm. he jokes to his friends and he's like nah i'm marinating the meat like why 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 do men want to force a yes by getting people drunk why 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 is that a thing that's rapey you know awesome. like like as much as somebody is is not saying no if they are drunk if they're intoxicated that is no no means no but so does being drunk. yeah so you know what I mean? Hundred percent. I think that if people are intoxicated, I often say, especially like to my younger sister and her age group, because I mean they're eighteen. Obviously, they're gonna start exploring with alcohol. If you are drunk, you're not in the space to have sex. If you're At drunk, all. you're not in the space to. I mean, you. And also, I think being drunk. You know, it's yeah. If you're drunk, don't I think don't be engaging in that because it really mm. does become very tricky, and people use mm. it to their advantage or like. Oh, but exactly. You say yes, but you could see someone was not okay and not mm. present. Mm. So mm. yeah, definitely alcohol um, and sex is something people need to be very, very careful of. Yeah. Mm. So I also, I, yeah, I just want to say that also in a lot of instances, maybe you're both drinking. So the guy and the girl is also they both drinking yes. or whatever, you know. And yeah, I had a conversation with the guy two weeks ago over the weekend and he was like okay what if we're both drinking and now we go to the bedroom and what and i told him dude wait until the morning and you'll both wait, be so thank you. like mm. what what's the difference you know mm. why can't you wait like she and then he was like, like oh, why no. why is it now why is it mm. wrong or die and, also and then, why yeah. put yourself in a position where you both could either regret it one person could not fully remember their experience yeah. why not yeah. just wait to sleep it off and if you still mm. want to engage in, mm. in sexual activities with this person you do so in the morning exactly yes. and so, mm -hmm. sorry then this conversation turned to this guy was like okay what if she says no i mean she says yes or she consents to sex when she's sober then later on in the evening um she says no but she's she's not in the right state of mind. So do I really take that no when she said a yes when she was sober? And I'm just like, bro, like, are, are you hearing what you're okay. saying? Are, are, you, are you listening to the words that are coming out your mouth? The fact that you, you are not sure, you're trying to politic this whole, this whole situation, yes. you know it's wrong. You're trying mm, to justify wrong behavior. And it's incredibly behavior. wrong because as people we change our minds within 30 minutes or an hour all the time i may want to have mcdonald's right now and i can sit on it and in an hour's time i may decide hey i don't want mcdonald's so mm. why is it so hard to understand that in the beginning of the night yes i may have thought that i wanted to have sex with you and i could have said yes to it and i get to a point mm. later on in the night worse if i'm now intoxicated and i'm now saying to you that i don't want to have sex listen to the words that i'm saying in that moment don't mm. hold on to things that were said before mm. consent is continuous 
Exactly. This reminds me of the tea analogy. If 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 you offer somebody tea and they're like no i'm fine thanks are you going to give them hot tea and force them to drink the hot tea no you're not no, if you not. give somebody if you give somebody tea but the tea um waits for a few minutes and becomes cold and the person doesn't want that tea anymore are you still going to give to them no you're not no. because they don't feel like having tea anymore and you're not going to storm into somebody's house and force tea on them if like guys actually Everyone that's watching after the live please google the tea analogy because it's the one two threes of consent because it there seems to be people yeah. seem to create blur lines with this whole consent thing and there aren't any blur lines like it's 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 a, it's a clear cut no means no but so does pushing there somebody are away none. so does leaving someone saying leave me alone so does someone saying no i'm not ready so so does someone saying i don't feel like it being drunk is not consent blue ticks also are not consent if someone is sending you a blue tick like hey can we meet if they blue tick you receive that no they don't consent to you or pestering them all the freaking time hey no let's do this Literally it, it turns into harassment yeah. and it brings me to my next point on consent is rejection rejection is a huge huge like you need to accept rejection in order to respect the rules of consent if you if you don't know how to accept rejection you you'll never be respectful to the next person you know what i mean and like if 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 how do i put this rejection is something that happens to everyone it has nothing to do with your self esteem as the person who is rejected there's no need to act aggressive to someone saying no to you don't insult me when i say no to you if you're cat calling me in the street and i'm or if you're giving me non consensual flirting and all that stuff and i give you no vibes don't be aggressive what are you doing like there's no reason to be aggressive now it's awkward for me to say no now it's awkward cuz you're aggressive towards me now i'm scared like we need also but mm. let's not forget that we live in south africa and south african women have been murdered for rejecting men Dude. so this case has played out quite a few times and i can speak to my own experiences with my friends i've been asked for a number and if i've said no and someone has become aggressive i have given my number with the intention to then block whenever they text me just so that i can leave the situation alive dude so i really do need and i'm going to speak to my in my experience obviously people who have had an issue with rejection have been men um for me it just speaks to their entitled entitlement over women and over our bodies and over our time um mm. and if if he is to show interest in you then it should be of utmost importance to you mm. yeah i just like you touched on a very important thing gugu like we say yes um not because we want to but because we feel forced to my eventual yes, yes is not is not consent it's coercion you need to understand that you forced me to say yes, yes. i for one yes. have given many many men my number or my boyfriend's number or whoever's number because i'm avoiding that no because i feel unsafe like dude i've i've had a situation where some guy this is This is a real story and I'm actually serious. This guy was asking for my number and he was legit um uh he was legit threatening me with his dog. We were taking a walk my cousins and I and he was walking his dog and and it's a pit bull it's a scary dog and he's like if you don't give me your number I uh, I'm going to let my dog go wild on you. And I'm just thinking bro like is this a real thing? Like I'm being threatened because I'm saying no. like how 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 does that even work and how is that normal and his friends were just laughing like ha 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 and his dog is barking yeah i'm scared i'm yelling my number out because i don't want this dog to be let loose on me yeah. i'm forced to say yes like it it's just so uncomfortable and yeah no him this do you guys want to add anything else um onto the consent chat or can we move on Um I do think we should slightly just speak about coercion. Um we haven't mm. really explained it so people do understand what that is. Um mm-hmm. I'm going to explain it briefly. Obviously you guys please do add in case my explanation is not I yoga is not it. But mm-hmm. if you are in a position if okay if you're doing something with someone and you say no and they try to um what's the word? convince, convince you. 
into doing that thing that is cohesion. So if you are with your boyfriend and you tell him you're not in the mood and he proceeds to kiss you on the neck and to rub your thighs and to mm-hmm. do that, he's trying to coerce you. If mm-hmm. someone is asking for your number and they're saying that if you don't do this, my dog will bite you, you are coercing mm-hmm. me into <clears throat> sending you my yes. number. And I feel like there's so many times where we are in positions where we say yes because we're scared of what no will be met with yes Mm. i know of many women many women who have been in sexual um encounters and have agreed to certain things because they were scared of saying no in that position and in that time with a Mm. man on top of you in a room you don't know what will happen if you say no if you do stop Mm. halfway if he does want to do something so yeah like a yes needs to be enthusiastic and it needs to be unbiased and it needs to come from me